Hi, this is Sabrina from the Cedar Mill Library, and today we are going to be um, making a Totoro doll out of socks um, using a take and make kit from the Cedar Mill and Bethany Libraries. So to get started, your kit will have a sock, um, a needle with the tip taped so that you don't poke yourself. Be careful when handling that. Um, you will also have a white and black piece of felt, big white, small black, and a spool of thread. So to get started, we're going to take our sock. I've already prepped this one. Um, and first turn it inside out so that the kind of nubby side is facing out. And then you want to draw this outline, if you can see it, I know it's kind of dark, on your sock. And this is gonna be the space between the ears. So we're basically drawing this space right here. Um, you can make this as long or short as you want. The deeper it is, the taller your ears will be and the shorter your body will be. The narrower you make this space, the fatter the ears will be. So if you want tall skinny ears, make it really long and make the gap here really wide. Um, I did mine, so a little bit shorter than my finger and it makes ears about this size. So um, go ahead and draw that line if you've got something that'll show up on your sock. I used a silver Sharpie to show up on the black. Um, you can use chalk, white out, or you can just kind of uh, freehand it. It's not a huge deal if the shape's a little bit wonky. So once you've drawn that line, we're going to take our needle and thread, and this um, spool will have more than enough thread. I've already made a couple Totoros with just one spool. So you'll have plenty. Go ahead and give yourself lots of length to work with. Um, tie a knot at the end so that it doesn't pull through while you work. And then just sew on the outside of this line. So I'm putting my needle, if you can see, on the far side over here of where I drew. And then when I cut out this space, I'm gonna cut on the inside to make sure that I don't um, cut where I've already sewn and get rid of my seam. So I've already sewn this one ahead of time so that you don't have to sit here and watch me. So at the end, after you've gone all the way around this shape, you'll just make a loop at the end. And then I'm just passing my needle, I know it's hard to see the thread, through the loop a couple times so that I can make a knot when I pull my thread tight. So that it'll stay. I'm gonna cut, leaving a little bit of a tail here. And this will be inside the doll once we're done. So it doesn't matter if it's kind of messy, if you've got thread sticking off. And then once you've done that, go ahead and cut this shape. Like I said, staying inside the line you drew to make sure that you're not cutting any of what you just sewed. And again, it doesn't matter if this is super neat and tidy because it will be inside the doll once we turn it right side out. You won't be able to see. Okay, so once you've got a shape like that, go ahead and turn your sock the right side out. We'll have to kind of pull and shape the ears. And they might be <laughs> slightly different shapes. I think everyone I've sewed turned out like that. If you, it doesn't bother me, so I just forge ahead. If you really want your ears to match, you can just turn it back inside out and sew another line outside of the one you already sewed to make the fatter ear more narrow and make them match. So it's not the end of the world if you get this far and they're not symmetrical. All right, now we're gonna take our bag of stuffing that was also in the kit. You should have about three handfuls in a Ziploc bag in there. And we're gonna stuff it in 
And you wanna make sure to use your fingers to kind of poke it up into the ears and shape them so that they are nice and filled out. And that one is really turning out a lot pointier. And again, you can kind of customize your doll here. If you want like a really small, tiny Totoro, you can kind of stuff that stuffing up in there and make it really small and compact and firm or you can kind of leave it more spread out, kind of knead it around so that it's even and a bit loose and you'll have a softer, bigger doll, it's up to you. So once you've stuffed what you want, go ahead and cut. I like to cut right where the, the ribbing starts on my sock. So right where it kind of turns from smooth to bumpy. We're just gonna trim that off. And then kind of see how much you have left over here. We are going to use a little bit of spare for making a tail. So if you don't want your tail to be this ribbed texture, you'll wanna trim a little extra off to make that tail. Just make sure you're not trimming off so much that you won't be able to sew up the bottom of the Totoro. So make a judgment call, it's up to you. All right, so now I've got a good amount to kind of stuff in. We're just gonna kind of shove all those edges inside like that. I should have done this with a white sock so it was easier to see. And then we're gonna take our needle and thread again. You're gonna to want to re-knot the ends together so that we can sew again. So I'm just gonna make a loop and pass the ends through a few times to make the knot kind of big. Sometimes you can kind of just twist it and let the ends twirl through on their own. And then just kind of pull it tight so you got a messy little knot. Then we're going to take our needle. And with the ends kind of stuffed in, I'm just going to pass my needle through all these little bumps and lumps I made by stuffing the ends in. And you'll kind of sew in like a star pattern. So I'm starting on this side, then I'm going to grab one of the lumps on the opposite side. Be really careful as you do this not to poke your fingers, go nice and slow, and then just pull it tight so that those two ends meet and I can't see the thread. And you'll have to kind of keep pulling continuously all through this. So this side's kind of bulging out. I'm gonna grab a chunk from over here and pull that in. And you'll just keep going like that, pull any chunks that are sticking out, making kind of a weird shape and pulling them very tight. And each time you relax your thread, it'll kind of pull apart. So just keep the tension nice and tight there. It might help to hold on to it with your fingers. Until you get kind of a nice little uh, cinched knot there. It's up to you how long you keep sewing ends in. I just wanna get a few more of these lumps tied in. So mine's not perfect. You can still see some of my threads. Like I said, I'm not too worried about making everything nice and even. So I'm just gonna do one more stitch and then however it looks is how it looks. So again, to tie this off, just going to poke your, your needle through another bit of fabric but not pull it all the way through. So you have this loop and keeping tension so that those um, stitches don't become loose again. I'm just holding those stitches I made in place with my thumb and passing my needle through that loop over and over 
to make a nice knot so that it stays put. And this will be on the bottom of your doll, so those extra threads won't be too visible. So now we've got our basic Totoro shape. At this point, we're gonna grab the felt that was in your kit. Uh, some of you wound up with felt that's kind of glittery on one side. Um, it's up to you. If you want to use, have a glittery Totoro, you can do that. If not, use the other side of your felt. Kind of gives you some options. So to start, I want to make the whites of his eyes. And I'm going to use a penny to get a nice circular shape. And because I don't want a glittery Totoro, I'm going to draw my circles on the glittery side so they won't show up on the non-glittery side when I cut them out. So I'm just holding this penny in place, drawing circles, and I'm keeping these circles as far in the corners as I can so that I've got this nice big space left over to cut out the tummy. So go ahead and cut those out. And once it's cut out, I like to kind of turn it over and see how close I actually got to a circle and try to trim off any edges that make the eyes kind of lumpy. All right, and then with this space that's left over, you can either take your pencil and draw the tummy shape you want, or you can just start cutting and see what happens. It's usually good to have a plan before you start cutting, but since I'm just trying to get the biggest shape possible, doesn't matter too much. And then once I have my tummy cut out, I'm going to hold it up to my doll and see what it looks like. So that may be a little bit too big. I don't have a lot of space left for the eyes up there. So I'm just going to trim some more off. Try and make it more symmetrical. And then I'm gonna trim quite a bit off the top here. Try and make more room for a face. My goal of keeping it symmetrical isn't really bearing out. This would probably be another good opportunity to get the pencil back out, but that's okay. So it's a little better. Um, I would probably, if I was working on this by myself, just keep going and trim a little more off, but this will work for our purposes. So the nice thing about the felt is you can kind of stick it on there and block out where you want to sew everything on and it will stay for you pretty well. Um, the last part we need are the pupils of the eyes and the nose. So I'm gonna get my black Sharpie back out Again, you can just kind of, if you don't have anything to mark black fabric with, you can just eyeball it. We're just making smaller circles to go in the eyes and a little oval for the nose. So you don't have to be real exact with the shape or size. I'm using a penny again for the eyes, which is gonna make these pupils too big, but I just like to kind of know what size I'm working with so these will be the same size as the eyes I've already cut and then I can trim them down to make pupils. And you can kind of affect your Totoro's expression at this stage too. If you give him really big pupils, he'll look kind of surprised. 
and cute. If you give him smaller ones, he might look kind of shocked or suspicious. I'm placing mine exactly in the middle of his eyes because that's kind of how he is in the show, but you can put them in different directions, make him look like he's looking at something, anything you want, it's up to you. The big thing that's important isn't really size or shape, but that they both match close enough. So these obviously aren't identical, but good enough. If you have one that's drastically smaller than the other, you probably want to trim the larger one so they match. And then I'm just going to freehand a little oval for the nose. And because I'm using a more black sock for this demo Totoro, the nose isn't going to show up very well. If you have, most of you have pretty pale gray socks in your kit. Some of you wound up with these black stripey socks, which I think will be pretty cute on Totoro's ears, have stripey ears. But it'll kind of depend how well your nose shows up. And you can do these with any spare socks you have at home, especially if you have a mismatched sock drawer and you don't think that sock's ever gonna get a buddy again. This is a great craft to use those up. So there is our Totoro's face. And at this stage, you'll just take your needle and thread and sew these on. Um, I won't make you watch me do that part. And lastly, we are going to use the bit of sock that we trimmed off to make a tail. So for the tail, we just want to draw a triangle. I would make it kind of as big as you can with the scrap you have. And then it's always easy to trim it down if you want it to be smaller. And then this is a tube of fabric. So make sure that you have it folded flat and you're cutting through both the front side of the tube and the back side so that you have two pieces for your tail. And then after you're done sewing your features onto your Totoro, we will sew the two pieces of tail together. It's a little bit finicky because they're very small. So just be careful not to stab yourself. And I'm just gonna do a quick little whip stitch. So I'm letting the thread go around the edge. And that's kind of easier for me to sew quickly. You can do that or you can go in and out so that it's got kind of that pick stitch pattern. It's up to you. It'll look a little different and that'll make your Totoro your own. So once you've sewn around two pieces or two sides of the tail, So that you've created kind of a little pocket. Oh. The thread really wants to wrap around the far side of the tail. There we go. You'll have created a little pocket that you can stuff. I'm not going to finish going to the ends there, but you would. And then you can take, if you have some more stuffing that you didn't put in the doll, you can use that. If you use that all up, you can also take some of the scrap of sock that we made and just kind of cut a bit off or several little bits off and use those for stuffing and kind of jam it inside so that you've got a nice little chubby tail with some weight to it. And then you'll just take that and kind of eyeball where you want it on your Totoro doll and sew it on. And once you're finished, 
you'll have a cute little buddy and you can do this with as many socks and as many colors as you want. So we hope you enjoyed that and check out our website for more fun programs. Thanks.